Okay, we are now recording. <laughs> okay, hello, welcome to this meeting of the Energy and Climate Action Committee. I'm just trying to see if we have, we have no attendees yet, so it's just us. Hi, Dwayne. So let me just, um, I'm sorry, I'm just running in here a little late today. And I do want to get my notes up. Um, so I need just a moment to do that. But meanwhile, while we're getting started, who is the note taker today? Uh, let's see, I have the, who did it last time was Laura, it looks like Jesse or Don. Jesse and Don. Don, you want to take notes today? Oh, Jesse's here. Jesse, you want to take notes today? Uh, let me let me answer that differently. I will take notes today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jesse. <laughs> um, and thank you for chairing last time in my absence. We had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I did listen to the entire recording this morning <laughs> over breakfast. <laughs> You're the first. That's amazing. <laughs> um. All right, so where's, I'm looking for today's, I'm sorry, I. one of the things we have to discuss today is changing the time of this meeting if I'm going to chair them because I just came from a class and so I'm a little discombobulated um, and I'm trying to find the agenda, which I thought I had up. Uh, Do you want me to display it on the screen? Hang on a second. I think I know where it is. Um, agenda. I've got it. Okay. I just mostly need it so I know what we're doing. Um, so the first order of business is to review the minutes from last time. I can put those up on the screen if folks want. I actually have those here. I have them, Lori. If Go ahead and put them up then. Yeah. Thank you, Stephanie. Sure. Give me a second. I will slip off screen and take another bite of my sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, let me just get my folder it was not accessible for some reason. And Stella, I actually really appreciated all of the um, information about transportation in regards to the new school and uh, back and forth on that. That was great. I, I'm sorry I wasn't here to ask questions. <laughs> great. Yeah. I mean, hopefully it's a conversation that continues. It sounds like it will. Yeah. All right. So there are there any questions or concerns on the... There's a typo. Scooters is spelled scoters. Oh. Isn't a scoter a type of duck? I'll make a note and correct uh, it. I think that might be with a D, but I think you're right. Scooter. <laughs> and that Western Mass Solar Forum has been fantastic. I, I, I don't know how you managed to pick on all of the best topics that are the most relevant to the town right now, Dwayne. <laughs> and breathing them. Yeah. Yep. Any other comments? I don't know if it's worth going through this whole thing again. Has everybody already seen these? All right, so there are scoters. <laughs> Ford F has the typo scoters. Um, I am happy with them. I will move to accept these minutes with that one minor correction. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. All okay. in favor. Well, I got to stop. Oh, yeah, right. I got to do a voice vote. Um, okay. Voice vote in no particular order. Roof? Yes. D? Yes. Goldner? I'm going to abstain since I wasn't here. Okay. 
Allison? Dane. Selman? Yes. Gregor? Yes. Okay, so that was two abstentions? Okay. Uh oh. And minutes are no, we're good. Minutes are. Approved. No, I'm just looking at my other computer, oh. <laughs> which has my notes on it. It's oh. it's complaining. It's not booting properly. Um. <clears throat> oh well. <laughs> Flying without my notes today. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so the next uh, order of business is um, is the uh, comments from the uh, public, but there are no attendees other than us right now. So I guess we'll come back to that at the end, as always. And go right to updates. Uh, there is one thing that maybe we should discuss right away, though, actually. I think it's not on the agenda, but with your permission, I'd like to discuss the timing of this meeting. Um, can we do that now? Is that any objections? Mostly because I don't want to forget. I brought it up two meetings ago and then wasn't here last time. Uh, I have a class that ends at 4.15. <laughs> So, and it's a three hour lab. So after three hours of standing and interacting with students and running around trying to make sure they don't blow anything up, I have to run back to my office because I can't make it home and do this meeting from my office on public uh, computers, which makes me a little uncomfortable. <laughs> I usually try to keep my politics and my work separate. Um, so I would really appreciate, I mean, I'm in my office, but it's a university computer, right? Um, I would appreciate if we could move this meeting starting time to five, uh, at very least 445. I might not quite make it home by then, but I probably can. Um, can we have a short discussion on that? Is there any any concerns about that? I, I would just quick, quickly comment that this is not a place for your politics either, according to everything I've read, um, <laughs> but that five o'clock would be fine with me. <laughs> True. It's not supposed to be politics, but somehow just facts here, baby. Just facts. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is mostly a issue for people with small children, especially Stella. How how do you feel about moving it to five? Um. Yeah. That's that's mostly fine as long as I don't have to like do any like if I if I'm the minute taker, it might be problematic. Um, okay. All right. Yeah. We can honor that, I think, especially if we get two new members. So, and then at the end of this semester, I'd be happy to move it back to 4.30. I, it's just I, the next uh, 13 weeks, 15 weeks, whatever it is in a semester nowadays. Um, all right, so, so- Lori, that would go till, so 5 to 7 p.m. 5 to 7, yeah, I, I heard the okay. discussion last time. We can keep it at two hours and try to end a little early, but we'll keep it for the two hours. Okay. okay, so then so the you next... might want to make this a vote, actually. Oh yeah, that's we probably should do that. So, uh, is there a motion? Can we have a motion? We probably need a motion, I suppose, to do mm -hmm. this. I don't know if I can move as chair, but if I can, I'd like to move. We move it to five. I'll second that. Assuming you can do that. <laughs> yeah. Or Steve, you could just make the motion. Oh, uh, okay. I I move that we uh, for the fall semester up until. But through December, that we shift our meetings from 5 to 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. And we need a second. I'll second that. Thank okay. you. Okay. And a vote. Please ensure your microphone is on. Uh, Roof? Yes. D? Yes. Goldner? Yes. Allison? Yes. Selman. Yes. And Bregger. Yes. All right. You've got your new time there, Lori. Thank you. And thanks for the going out of order here or breaking the order. Um, so now we're back onto the agenda and we have updates. Um, uh, first from Stella on transportation. Any updates? Um. Yeah, I guess uh, sort of an open question of what people think would be helpful to work on vis-a-vis -vis transport next, because it seems like we've had like an education series. There was the great discussion last week, and I was hoping that like a clear action item for us would come out of that, and it didn't, which is fine. Um, but then it kind of raises the question of of what would be 
make the most sense uh, for us to try to move on with respect to transportation, whether that's like more public education, like, I don't know, um, something my partner suggested was like, don't park in the EV spots, because I guess people have been parking and like just parking at EV chargers. Um, I'm not sure. So if anybody has any thoughts on that, uh, feel free to either let me know by email or um, now. So I can hmm. say something. One thing I can ask is um, I was surprised to learn last week that that bike plan is not complete. And is that something we can help push forward? How can yeah. We so maybe um, it's kind of hard to say because I think they need to finish the map, right? Yeah. And without like, unless like we're going to finish the map, you know, because then, because if, if it were done, done, then we could write a memo of some sort. Um, I mean, I guess we could write a memo still uh, encouraging town council to like. To prioritize that. I prioritize mean, I think that's, that, help them find a person to finish the map. Yeah. I think especially if they're going to be looking for money and do redoing, doing a study even of those two yeah. intersections, having that map there is really important. Um, I was a little worried about the discussion of sidewalks and walking because it seemed to leave out bicycles in some places and, uh, you know, just a sidewalk won't do it. Right. It has to be totally. right. So, yeah, so maybe I'll draft a memo kind of in support to the town council, right. Or town manager. I think that would be great. I think it would be of finishing that we also see the value in prioritizing this plan of tax. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Especially in so far as they're doing these studies now of those intersections, and those are some of the worst places in town in town for bicycles. I mean, Route Nine and Pelham Road, and especially at those intersections. I every time I go through them, I'm <laughs> I'm scared, you know, and I do it all the time. But Dwayne, yeah. uh, well, I live in the same neighborhood as you know, and I the only way I ride my bike is straight across Route Nine to Amherst Woods and get on the bike path. I, I won't ride down either of those roads. Um, uh, but um, but I guess what I wanted to offer, and I don't know how much data is available, and we're not a research group, so I'm not put, suggesting that we undertake this research project, but from my perspective and, and from ECAC, I think what we're after to, to a large extent with the um, uh, facilitating uh, by, by bicycling to school and bicycling generally and other transportation issues um, is um, its impact on greenhouse gas emissions reductions. And so I, I and to the extent that um, the town or maybe pursuing funding, um, the an analysis of, of greenhouse gas savings to add to a proposal um, would be helpful, I, I would imagine. Uh, so I'm, I, I uh, again, we're not a research group and not wouldn't be able to undertake that from scratch, but is there, um, I mean, is, I think this is the, the um, transportation committee or I forget exactly what they're called, but um, you know, do they do, are they, do they include any analysis of, of sort of increased bicycling uh, and so forth that could be readily translated into um, reduced uh, automobile use and greenhouse gas emissions that we could um, offer. I read the plan and I don't recall that. Lori, I think you also read their plan. Did, do you remember anything like that? I don't remember seeing it. It was a while ago now though. Um... But that's an obvious thing to ask. I mean, I was just going to make a note here. One could do a quick back of the envelope, just. But we not. We really need to know how many people. What is the potential for this town for people to use, biking and walking lanes and walking? Yeah, and walking. Yeah, and even even just as an exercise, I know there's. The, it was. I learned at the last meeting that there's going to be this. Um, um, I forget what it's called. Walk to school or bike to school day. Yeah, uh, it might be an interesting uh, student project. That's right uh, for the for the kids. Uh, is it, I'm not sure if this is all the schools or the elementary school, particularly, but a little school science project for them to um, 
uh, calculate for that day at least um, what they saved in greenhouse gas emissions. And we could, you know, potentially provide a little bit of guidance for them to do that. Your, that little kid could do it <laughs> with his big hook. Uh, this is a snake hook. She's very interested in herpetology. Uh, okay. Nice. Okay, I nice. Little, little, little a snake hook here. Okay. I, I used to be big into catching snakes when right. I was that age. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that's for an awfully big snake. <laughs> Out of the Everglades. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> All right, so, um, okay, and we're going to come back to that bike, bike to work day a minute when we get to the um, block party tabling, I think, but um, let's, let's put a little star on that so we don't forget, but the, um, the idea of doing some quick calculations, I guess, I guess what we need as always is, is data, <laughs> but maybe I'll, maybe I'll dive into it a little bit. That's the sort of thing. I like data. Could just say, yeah, you know, ten percent reduction in in uh, vehicular travel. It like yeah. it, it, if we do, it, it's it, it's like biking and walking is zero. So if you can, if five percent of the time you bike, then it's a five percent reduction. Yeah, yeah. If we can even get some idea of what the, I think we have those numbers right for what the overall yeah. emissions are cool. in the town. So the superintendents, and I think that came up last, like two weeks ago, the superintendents have a list of everybody who's theoretically in walking and biking distance. So I think what what Kathy or maybe um, Chris from TAC said is that it's been hard to get their hands like back on that data uh, because of all, everything that's going on with the schools. Yeah. But theoretically, that data is readily available from the superintendents um like from the schools like who theoretically could walk or bike to school and then from that uh it should be possible like it should be pretty straightforward to like crunch the numbers on if all those kids were driving you know or you know if their parents were, were driving them <laughs> that is do they right. not have the option for the school bus is that from, from that? They do. I, they do, but I don't think it would be easy to learn how many of the children who live within a theoretical biking, walking radius would otherwise take the school bus. And that was the other thing that maybe you remember. It sounds like school bus ridership is way down. Yeah, because the buses take a very long time to get where they're going. And so a lot of parents just drive their kids in, um, which is not great. Um, and on the other hand, I'm heartened by the fact that I see more and more of these Dutch style bicycles all the time with the big, you know, crib in it for the kids for to stick two or three kids. Um, they're, they're all over the place now, it seems. And I could just imagine a day when everybody takes their kids to work in school that way, right? You drop your kids off on the way to work while you're on your, you know, giant e-bike, <laughs> giant slow e-bike, but, um, with a big... They're fast. They're fast. I, I, oh, they are pretty. Pick, yeah, I pick up. I do preschool pickup in Northampton on it, and it's great. Okay. Yeah. The only bad part is almost getting killed by drivers. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm always astounded. There's one person who's been driving up and down Pelham Road with two kids in one of those things. I've seen that person. And it just, I just, right. yeah, it's terrifying. I, I keep seeing them on the front page of the of the paper. Right. It just, it's terrifying. I don't know how they. Kudos to them, but it's scary. <laughs> um, so yeah. Anything else um, we should talk about there? So you're going to draft a memo. So the do I the yeah I'll draft a memo them. to the council. Um, I guess I could reach out to like the schools about those numbers. I feel like now is not a great time uh maybe like mid-semester no I'd, I'd say keep this just focus on this memo keep it simple just a few lines you know just saying that ECAC supports this effort and um and here's why and you know and and we want to encourage you to finish this map as soon as possible and come up with a few reasons that make sense including the fact that they're about to do a study and um you know having that plan in place would seem to be important 
Right. And then also, because that was text that also encouraged them to then adopt it, like the same way. Adopt it, right. Adopt. right. To complete it and adopt it. Right. Okay. Anything else for transportation? Um, Don, anything for anything new for Pace? Any action there yet? Oh, no, and um, my discombobulated summer is finally over. Um, between the Azores and walking in England, and in any event, I will touch base with Stephanie this coming week since my life has settled down. Um, so hopefully at least I can um, have something for you two weeks from now. Although it may be from Maine because my... Dwayne knows my oldest son, Barrett, is getting married up in Maine um, on September 30th. Congratulations. So we're going to all be up there that Wednesday before, but I will be available for the meeting on Wednesday. So the last of my kids to get married, so then <laughs> life will really settle in. Mazel tov. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So I don't have much with heat pumps either. I'm, we're still just waiting, right, Stephanie? And except I did send around, I asked Stephanie to forward to you guys today um, a note that I thought was interesting on a lot of levels on mini heat pumps, which I didn't really even appreciate were a thing. Um, I really like the saddle shaped ones. I might get one for my sunroom. Um, they seem to me to solve a real need for renters. They're relatively inexpensive. I expect there are probably rebates for installing them. I need to find out more about that. Um, and uh, it just looked like a really interesting topic to talk a little more about sometime or to publicize a little bit maybe at the block party or somewhere else. Um, but Stephanie, what's why don't we get a little bit of an update if there is one? Are we still waiting on... Uh, we had... Where is the heat pump so the last uh exchange i had was just before sean mangano left um and i had been requested to provide a little bit of information for a legal counsel um i provided that and sean said he would get back to me and then he left and he didn't get back to me and i don't know if anyone else in the accounting department i'm there as you can imagine very overwhelmed right now um yeah. so um, you know, two people who already have a full plate of a workload um, are splitting his duties for right now. So, um, and they're the people I would have to contact, of course. So I'm going to follow up, but I've got a whole host of other things that I'm following up with them about right now. So, so um, it's just yet another, but, but so right now it's still a little bit up in the air, but I'm hoping um, we'll be able to move the RFP forward. So what was Sean's position again? He was the finance director. He was the finance director. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's where that stands. So you had gotten information back from legal, which was good. And all right. So that was still going back and forth and now it's just dropped. Um, that's too bad. If there's anything that we can do to, to help. Um, I, I, it's just the, the like state of where things are right now. I don't really think anything you could do to pressure anybody would be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> so right. I think it's just, I'm, I'm going to, you know, it's like, I'm trying to not overwhelm with too many yeah. things at a time. And I've got. No, another... I meant if there was, if there was literally anything we could do to help with this oh. research that needs to be done, if there's phone calls that need to be made, I can, I can spend a little time. It's no, I, it's we're. I mean, it's just a matter of them saying to me, okay, and we've got a process and a way to reach out for, getting interested parties uh, made aware that we've got this RFP available. So I appreciate that. I just don't think that's the kind of, you know, that's not what well, we just need our people to be able to say, yes, we can do this now and to get the process moving. Right. So I think that's it for updates. Um, and we did a discussion. Oh, I didn't see that on the agenda. I wouldn't have skipped like that. Sorry about that. Um, but we already did the discussion of the ECAC meeting time and we're to block party tabling. 
So there was some good discussion last week, I think, and some ideas about uh, the block party. Um, I was particularly, I like the idea of the buttons. How do we get buttons? Is it too late? Does anyone have a button making machine? We used to have those back in the day. Uh, we could make name tags out of pieces <laughs> of paper or. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, that's not quite as nice as a button, but, you know, the hello, I my name think, is tags. I think that some, one of our, I think oh. we have local, a number of local businesses that make buttons. Well, I'll bet the presses do. I'll bet the um, collective copies probably will print you a button, I bet. Collective yeah. probably does. Um, and maybe um, Sunrise Printing might. Yeah. Um, I don't know. This probably was my idea if it costs money and is difficult. So, um, um, yeah. My 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 daughter has volunteered some at the library, and I recollect she said that she was making buttons as uh, in the Jones Library there. Ooh. So I don't I can't have a before, but I and I don't know if they'd be willing to let another group come in and punch some buttons. Um, but that's a possibility to look into. Well, that's something to Google real quick. Does the Jones <laughs> Library? Can you check out a light, a button making machine from the library? <laughs> and then, of course, the internet. You know, you can get fifty buttons for forty dollars, or ten buttons for twenty dollars. There's that. Oh, they have a video on Facebook: the great unboxing of our new button maker from the Jones Library oh. in Amherst. <laughs> <laughs> what? So they they apparently have a button maker. Um, so maybe that's the thing to do is to come in with just a printout of what we want on the button and then just ask them to make it for us. Um, that could be fun. I I can try to take care of that sometime. Um, what should it say? I'm on ECAC. Ask me ask me questions about. Ask me about what. They're not. No one does. Do people know what ECAC is? They don't know what ECAC is. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not the people we'd want to talk to. So, what should the button say? I'm on ECAC. Ask me about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah <right. laughs> That's actually not a bad idea. Be, a, be mysterious. Okay. It, it could just say, what is ECAC? With a big question mark. There we go. I think... Oh, I think it needs to be a prompt, like ask me what is ECAC. They did not tell me, tell everybody, tell their skin that there's a Rankin's dragon. Oh, yeah, there. there's a Rankin's dragon over here. This is a real lizard. Awesome. Yeah. Oh. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> oh, I right. see. It. There it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hold it up. Hard to see. Oh, He's like my. Oh, oh, oh what? Wow, oh, that's a beauty. Oh, that's a real Beautiful. Thing. Okay, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> right. Wow. Is that free ranging in your house? <laughs> no, we also have a cat, so it wouldn't survive very long. Oh, I bet they don't play together well. Yeah. Yeah. I, knew someone, yeah. I knew someone who used to keep free range snakes in their house as mousers. They were allergic to cats, but not snakes. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I don't think Don likes that idea. <laughs> <laughs> These were really big, colorful snakes from the Southwest. He lives in Tucson. So, yeah, really big, pretty snakes. All right, at any rate. Um, I could make a good wedding gift. I think. <laughs> big snake? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he lives in New York. York. He probably <laughs> needs it. He lives in the city. <laughs> All right, so the buttons will say, "What is e ask me, what is ECAC? How about that? that we decided on okay if i can get buttons made i'll get buttons made um but now what do we we do have a table i understand from listening to last week's um so and, and we're going to be in front of the fire station uh so we need to have a schedule of who's going to be there and we also need ideas for what to do now i can bring all the same flyers that we had at the sustainability festival but i think it would be nice um i think you know a lot of people a lot of the people who come to this thing are going to be renters. And I think it would be nice if we had something for the renters in particular. 
can we you know offer them uh, and and also for the for the biking day right so we i think there are things we can try to be i like the idea of trying to get people involved in some way so you know here's how you can be involved there's a october 4th is it there's a bike to work day right take your bike on october no we can help tack advertise that right um and i think we should also maybe have something you know are you uh you know is your apartment cold in the winter uh are you using space heaters consider mm -hmm. you know a mini a, a um a, a mini heat pump right uh, for a few hundred dollars, you can stick one in your window and you can probably get rebates on it and it'll save the money, right? And uh, it, maybe we can just give out information, you know, that might be helpful to people who are heating in an inefficient way or using space heaters. Like I horribly, here's my situation at UMass. I have a, I have a, uh, I have no control over the thermostat in my office because they messed up again. And the thermostat is on the other side of a long skinny room. It's set at 70, I can't move it. 70, I would never set an air conditioning thermostat at 70. My windows, which are metal are at the other side of the room. And so is the air conditioner. And so it goes full blast all the time, right out the metal, you know, basically heating the, cooling the metal windows. And on this side of the room, it's about 60 degrees. And on that side of the room, it's 70 degrees and I'm freezing my ass off. So I end up using a space heater, excuse my language. In the middle, <laughs> I'm exasperated, right? So you have to wonder how many people are doing this sort of thing in their apartments because they have leaky, you know, they can't afford to turn the heat up or they're using a space heater because something is messed up with the, I don't know about you, but I've seen this all the time in friends of mine who live in apartments where the heating is, they're doing all sorts of crazy stuff to try to save money and stay warm. And um, because the buildings are leaky and old and the heat is expensive. So if there's something we can do to help alleviate that, whether it's weatherization or just, just getting the word out that there are things they can do. Um, and I think I can certainly put a flyer together for renters, but maybe there are specific ideas we can. Well, mass say offers uh there's a web page i'm looking at energy savings for renters right and so we we may one thing would just be to promote this um have that url it's masssave.com slash residential slash four dash renters and people could go to that there's we could have a qr code so people could jump to it if they wish um there's two ways that. getting started on your own and working with a landlord um there's also a Oh, there's a 58 minute um, video accessing energy efficiency at a renter that I'm sure mm, probably no one would watch. Oh, but, I saw that one. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's one thing. I, I can't remember if anybody knew whether Mass Save was otherwise going to, or CET was otherwise going to be present at the fair, but um, yeah, we one can thing that would be easy would be to promote this Mass Save for renters program. And are we still looking for neighborhood leaders? Are we still looking for neighborhood people to do outreach? Stephanie, how are we set there? Well, we I, because we haven't moved the program forward yet. So when the program moves forward, that's part of it. Okay. And that's something that the consultant would help us work on. All right. Hmm. So I can put flyers together, you know, I'll, I'll, try to get some, I, I think we even have a flyer for renters from last time. I probably already have the QR code from that. That ah. sounds familiar. Uh, actually, let me take a look at what I have. Um, that'd be a, I feel like I'd be a little careful about trying to create original content about heat pumps and, yeah. and buying things. Right. I think okay. that would get us into trouble. It, the way every situation is different, a lot and a lot, you could end up spending money and increasing your electric bill. And I don't think we want to own that move. Okay, I don't think we have a renter's flyer on the other hand yet. So just, just referring them to Mass Save to that renter's page is probably a good idea. I really like the idea of this being an opportunity for us to support the work that others are doing. It's like we've got the, the mass save for renters, the bike walk to work day. Maybe 
we can kind of look around and see what else is happening. Because, uh, because again, I think putting together original content for when is the thing? It's in a week. Next week. Yeah, week yeah. From Thursday. Week from tomorrow. Week from Thursday. Yep. Yeah, Stephanie, I don't know if you know of any other kind of interesting initiatives that are happening already that would be like we could kind of cheer on and support QR code. Uh -huh. But that feels like a, a really useful use. Yeah, not off the top of my head. Um, and things like, you know, the the walk bike day is, you know, something that I think Stella probably got from the schools and you're probably as parents more connected than I am here in town hall. I'm very sort of focused on my area right now, so. Okay, so, and I think as always, the most important thing is just being there and talking to people. So um, having a few things like that and then just talking it up. Um, I could bring back, I still have the, um, you probably have them too, Jesse, I have from the Sustainability Festival, the ideas that people wrote down. I could bring those back if we want, but I don't know if it's, then we have to get easels and stuff too and worry about the weather. <laughs> So I don't know if it's worth doing that again or not. We could, I can always have at least one piece of paper for people to write down any ideas they have um, that they want us to know about, a clipboard or something. Or just that we had talked about too, about just having a place for people to write down their email address. So as we- oh, That's really good. As if, if and when we ever do outreach, um, you know, email and what do you want to know more about kind of thing. Yeah. Although I will say, I don't know if anyone under the age of 30 has email anymore. What? Oh, no, they all do. They have to. They have well, to. Well, in college, but. No, no, in work. It's people still, everybody I know, I mean, it's all, um, it's all the connections are done. You, you might Everyone you know might not be everyone. No, I'm not. I don't know for sure. I know a lot of people that just simply don't have email. Jesus, doesn't seem possible. What's happening in this world? Oh, <laughs> well, I think I think uh, in so far as an awful lot of work is remote nowadays. Um, you know, I know people who are writers rely on it to be in contact with editors and people all over the world, and people who are you, you couldn't. I'm thinking like I'm thinking like waiters and bartenders and busboys that and yeah uh, okay. what landscapers that it's a, not not writers necessarily not yeah. not not people in the chair force. Okay. Every landscaper I know has an email, but also every landscaper I know is over twenty five. So <laughs> maybe twenty five is the cutoff for email. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> All right, so we need a schedule Thursday. Thursday date is the 21st. 21st. Ooh, is that the equinox or is it the previous day? At any rate, um, Thursday, the 21st. It's five to nine. So who is able to come during that time and what times do you think you can come? I'm, I'm able to come I, just tell me doesn't matter okay, I'm, I'm sort of in the same category so who else has constraints that wants to be there but can only be there at certain times I'm pretty flexible too I think I teach until four so I could, I could get there at five I, I'll I'll take the first shift five to six or six thirty. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Five. Let's call. Let's call it. I think if we can get one more. Who do we have? We have Steve. Uh, me, Don. If we get one more, we got an hour per shift. Who else can be there? 
Jesse. It'd be fun to have more than one person at a time. But... Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah, it's fun too. Let's get one down and then we'll overlap a little. How about that? So I'm, Jesse. I'm, more, I'm happy to go anytime. So yeah. why don't we go five o'clock, Steve, six o'clock, Jesse? Sure. Uh, seven o'clock. I don't know. I guess I can show up at seven, eight o'clock. Um, That's me. Done. Okay. And then we'll just we'll just overlap a little bit. I mean, you know, if you want to come a little early, stay a little late. So there'll be two of us most of the time. So Steve, you I'll start. Be us happy off. To, I'd be happy to overlap okay. uh, probably in the earlier earlier part of the time frame. So how about you show up at like uh, five thirty or yeah, six? Yeah, something like that. Five thirty, Dwayne. Six, Jesse. I'll show up a little before seven probably and stay till eight thirty, and then Don will be eight. Okay. And so I may I, be there for the whole thing. I just didn't want to say that till the end. <laughs> Send an email to Laura saying she signed up for the whole thing as well. <laughs> yes. Laura, Laura's not going to be here, so she oh. already said she's un unavailable this time. Yeah. Put her on cleanup duty. <laughs> That's why I'm staying for the whole thing. No, okay. Do we need to bring anything other than a handful of the flyers and just for the, the QR code flyers and the not even flyers, really just posters and um, a sign-up sheet? And maybe another two, couple of clipboards, one for signing up, one for writing ideas down and buttons. I have um, I have like 30 clipboards. So do you want me to bring, I'll bring the clipboards. Yeah, bring a couple of clipboards and with a pad of paper on each. Yep. Great. Would it be crazy if we all agreed to wear, for example, a yellow shirt? I'm, Steve's yellow shirt looks so good. I don't think I own uh, a blue shirt. I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> yellow yeah. is not my color. Purple, red, not yellow. <laughs> Maybe blue. Lori, what will uh, be the purpose of the pads of paper? Uh, so people can sign up there with their email and so that people can write down ideas they want us to take with us. Okay, I'm just making a note. Something they want us to talk about. So two pads of paper could be the same okay. one, I guess. Well, I'll bring, um, I mean, I could bring four clipboards. So each person has two clipboards. Oh, I think just leave them on the table. Those just stay on the table. Two okay. isn't. All right. Sure. Just just collect. I don't think that's, they're going to be, I don't think there'll be a line. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. It'd be nice. It'd be nice if there were, but we'll take it as uh, if, if there is, we'll uh, use it as a lesson for next time. All right, so we got the block party tabling down. Um, anything else for the block party? Other ideas? All right, so I actually have to be there at five to drop stuff off, I guess. So um, I might show up at five and then disappear again until seven or something like that. I'll probably do that. Go home, eat dinner, come back. Um, all right, so let me make a note here. If there's nothing else on the block party, this next discussion I'm really looking forward to, but Laura's not here this week. This, um, exploring this uh community grant for or, or grant for community networked geothermal. Um, you know, in a sense, this committee needs a next thing to work on, right? And it might be nice to find something that we make happen or we help make happen in the next year that doesn't, you know, put more of a burden on Stephanie and the under and the understaffed town. Uh, if there's some way we can figure out to get folks involved. Larry, the, when the heat pump program launches. Yeah there's going to be plenty of opportunity for you all to help with that because there's going to really need to be getting the word out in a really concerted effort. I'm thinking about the Solarize program and, you know, the Solarize program, you know, the state had created a whole um, process um, and, you know, it was sort of easy for communities to sign on and they just kind of encouraged you to like create a committee that's specifically going to do the outreach for this. And so there was a, like a solar team. Um, so essentially, you all kind of, in some ways, were 
replace the solar team for the heat pump program. You I, you all would be kind of the ones I'd look to to help get the word out because you're the ones who really know a lot about it. Um, so, which mean might mean tabling sometimes and some other ideas that you all come up with. Okay, cool. Well, it's still a discussion I would very much like to hear, but not this week because Laura's not here. So um, that would be great. So that that's all the more reason that I, I, I it's, it's a little frustrating for everyone, right? Not knowing how long this things are going to get held up because of the state of the um, state of the town's uh, roster. Mm -hmm. Um but uh, hopefully this will happen eventually. All right, so let's just table that for now and we're up to staff updates. So go ahead, Stephanie. Um, I'm trying, <laughs> there's, uh, let's see. So um, because of some of the staffing changes, like I said, I haven't been able to move things like the heat pump program forward quite yet, but I, you know, that's kind of like my, my next agenda item, my to-do item with um, the folks in the accounting department and procurement and see if I can actually release that. So what happens is once that gets released, usually we post things for a couple of weeks and then we'll look to see what we get for response. I anticipate that CET will definitely put their hat in the ring because they're the ones that I did the initial outreach with to sort of develop the RFP. And they've been asking me <laughs> very regularly when the RFP is getting released. So I imagine that they will put their hat in the ring for that. Um, but I don't, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that there will be others as well that, you know, will certainly make um, the RFP available to, I would say probably most of the folks on the state's list because typically what we do is we look at the state's list because we can sort of move along faster if we go that route rather than having to just advertise and sort of wait to get responses that way. So um, I would say that's probably all said and done. Like by the time we actually like get the word out, get responses and then conduct some interviews, um, you know, that could take at least a couple of months to two months, maybe, if not three. So, you know, we'll try to move it along as quickly as we can. And I would think that when we get to the point where we're reviewing the um, responses to the RFP, we would want, I, I always ask for one of you to be part of that. So, Laurie, given that you're the one who's helped develop the RFP, with me and have been kind of leading this charge, I would maybe look yeah. to you. I'd love to look at that. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but, and other than that, I don't really, ha I mean, the solar, uh, you know, Dwayne's reported on the solar bylaw that's, you know, um, winding down. And so that should be available, at least a draft, <laughs> a final draft if you will, um, October 6th, it may still need some additional work. So it may not get to the council right away or to the town manager right away. But I think that's for the solar bylaw committee to be determining, excuse me, where they get to with that. Um, bike share is still, you know, um, we're you're still having meetings. Uh, we haven't had a meeting uh, in a while because of summer vacations. People weren't really available. So um, hopefully we'll be resuming our next meeting next Wednesday. So I should have more of an update at the next meeting after that about where we're at and what our next steps are. Um, uh, those are kind of some of the bigger things The the um, community choice aggregation, again, um, kind of on hold for a little bit because we were waiting on one of the communities to provide information to the consultant that was needed for the application. And they didn't get that in until this week. But they did finally so, get it in. They did finally get it in. So, but that just kind of, you know, we've had to wait for that. So um, I think we're going to have a meeting a week from Friday, not this Friday, 
Friday, obviously, but the following Friday, uh, I think we're going to try to gather as a committee, but I don't know that we have anything quite yet from the, the consultant. I'll just have to find out where they are with the application in terms of its submittal. Um, but again, you know, I, I anticipate that even with some of the changes in the, in the regulations and legislation for moving review of the applications along, it's still probably going to take a bit. I don't anticipate it's going to happen all that quickly. So um, I, I think we're looking at at least probably a year because I think they're still backlogged. So that would be my guess. Um, a so year, are... you mean a year once this, once it's submitted or a year to submit? Oh, a year once it's submitted Yeah. Okay. for the DPU to review it because they had. Get, when do you think it's going to get submitted? Uh, I'm, well, I don't, so that's what I was kind of saying. We were waiting for this last bit of information from one of the communities. And now that we have it, um, I'll get an update on the application. Hopefully, um, I hope certainly by the meeting a week from Friday, but if not, I'll, I'm going to ask sooner. I've already asked what needs to happen on our end. I haven't heard back anything. They're usually pretty good about getting back, but uh, once we got that information, they didn't respond to me yet about what else they need. So I think they're just trying to pull it all together. It's a lot of information. It's kind of mind numbing <laughs> because it's not, I mean, it's a lot of information when it's one community, but they're collecting information from three communities. Right. So it's a lot. And that's it. Right. Okay, ECAC member updates. Anyone? I have one if no one else does. There were Steph, Stephanie and Anna and I met to review the FAQ for about the specialized code, and Anna will submit that at the end of the week to the CRC. And that meeting is September 21st. So I think that is a good. Is that the same night as the block party? Yes. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Hold on a second. What time is that meeting? <laughs> yeah, I think it conflicts, Jesse. I saw that too, and I was going to actually reach out to ask about that. Okay, so Jesse, right now oh, you're oh. on for six, but if you can't make it, um, I guess Dwayne will put you in. How about Dwayne? How about we move you to six o'clock uh, with a little overlap on either side? So in case Jesse can't make it. Yeah, I can I can uh for sure be there um at okay. six and, and uh um relieve I guess Steve at that point um yep. or compliment uh Jesse if he's there. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, the CRC means at four thirty and I'm not sure what else they have on the agenda. Um Okay. Well if so, they yeah. really if they really do meet, you are excused from the block party, Jesse. <laughs> yeah. All right, I will. I'll get a note from <laughs> Mandy Joe <laughs> and get it notarized for you. I'm a notary. It's okay. Just bring it to me. I'll okay. <laughs> CRC ought to meet on a stage right there at the block party. How about I, well, we could draw? live stream it? We could live stream it at the ECAC table. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> Entertaining? No, <laughs> not. Did you see the, um, there was a wonderful email that went out from Lisa Cunningham. I meant to send this to you that had, um, let me just, let me just find it. Sorry, wrong keyboard. <laughs> uh, that went out to, uh, from zero carbon mass, right? that had a list of all the resources for people trying to, there was apparently some, did, did you see the presentation that they did on passing the code, on specialized code? Hmm. Um, they did a, let's see if I can find it. I'm pretty sure it was from Lisa. Yeah, there was a specialized code workshop last Thursday. Um, and- Oh uh, yeah. Right? I didn't, I didn't do it, see it. Did you? Okay. Was it good? I didn't. I didn't. I couldn't go either. Um, but there was a, a summary email that went out that is rather long. I can forward it to um, to Stephanie, maybe to forward it to everybody. But the thing that I noticed in it, number point number three in it was, it's four, remember guys, it's four points. 
And it was like a single short document with the four important things to remember about this code that answers most of the questions that were on your question sheet. Um, you know, for example, the first one is no additional requirements for additions, alterations, or renovations with a little bit of a star. I don't know what the star is from the, I know it's just referencing this, the different codes that are already in place. No additional requirements for all electric new construction, except number four, which is multifamily housing greater than 12,000 square feet. You know, it's it's just, it's, it's quick little points of these are the things that are different from what we currently have. These are the things that are, right? Um, and I thought that was particularly useful. A little one page summary of the code. So let me let me send that to you, Stephanie. And if you would just forward that to everybody. Remember, don't reply. You're allowed to cease. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, that would be great. That would be helpful. A little prep um, before. Yeah. Um, see in particular number three. So item three in the big long list is the four points. And there are PowerPoint slides that you can use. <laughs> there are, you know, there's like all sorts of stuff. They sort of summarized it and pulled all the information together into one place, right? So I thought that was particularly useful if extremely lengthy. So let me just go ahead and it's not even that lengthy on the scale of things. So I just sent it to Stephanie to forward to ECAC. Um, all right, I hope that's useful. Anything else on any other updates? If not, I have a short one. So, so I was supposed to give the annual report to um, town council, along with our me our um, goals, our suggested goals for the town manager, <clears throat> and uh, found out on Friday that we weren't on the agenda after all. So, <laughs> so um, that got put off. I can't do it next week because I have an important meeting with a lawyer uh, regarding my mom's situation um, in the evening, believe it or not, on Monday. And then the following Monday is Yom Kippur. <laughs> and so this puts it off almost a month um, to October 2nd, um, three weeks. So I will give that report on October 2nd now. And that's that's that <laughs> is that you can do that yourself lori or do you want some support company from other members um Press i don't know that it's necessary anyone else be there i did put together notes that stephanie marked up and that i was going to edit again that i can send to ecac for next time if you want to see it. It, it if you um i think i think it would be nice there were some let's see stephanie's going to be there if, if you if you are there it wouldn't hurt because if there's a question that's more up your alley i can deflect so you, you know ask ah the person who knows all about this is right there um but if not then it's you know it's it's okay it's just going to be a fight we only have 10 minutes on the agenda five to summarize the report and five for town manager goals and I'm actually going to skew it a little because I can't talk about the town manager goals without talking about the report and the things that I think are interest are important, right? Um, so I'm probably going to spend more like seven or eight minutes on the report and two or three minutes on suggested town manager goals. And I'll make the connection between what we just reported and, you know, this goal addresses that concern, this goal addresses that concern, this goal, right? Um, if folks want, I wouldn't mind since we now have time, um, putting it in the, I can put my draft notes, sort of the distilled version of the annual report down to one page in the next ECAC meeting packet. And if you folk, you know, if people want to comment on it, I wasn't going to read it, but I do, I do find it useful when I'm trying to put together a presentation to pretty much write out what I'm going to say. And then hopefully I don't end up reading it. Um, yeah. So Laurie, we'll put that as an agenda item and. Sure. That's, that's with cool. the goal that people bring comments to the meeting. You can put it on the screen and people can comment. Right. So I have to remember to send that. Yes. 
Um, and I've I got will, a note as an agenda item, so I would ask you for the uh, for the thing, right? Okay. And Lori, did you have a time? Do you know the time slot on October 2nd when you would be coming up? I think until they have an agenda, I have no idea, but my suspicion is it'll not be at the beginning of the meeting. <laughs> right. And those are like six hour long meetings sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, and even if it's the time that it's not likely to be right on oh, time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. You can, yeah, you can I'm, kind of figure it out. It's kind of impressive, actually. I was able to watch a meeting from home <laughs> and see where they were in the agenda and then leave, go and get there early for the part that I was at, and then go home and watch the rest of it. Um, so these are in-person These are in person meetings, or you just wanted to be there in person? They yeah. are. The town council is there in person, and, and it is my opinion that being there in person is a nicer okay way to communicate with them it's, it's a little bit like that scene in the beginning of superman where they're being judged you know they're sort of around you and you're at the table in the middle but, <laughs> but it's kind of fun senator <laughs> that kind of thing oh great maybe i will read <laughs> <laughs> Here's a copy of what I'm going to say. No need for me to say anything at all. No. <laughs> uh, all right. I'll plan on being there in person then. I hadn't initially planned on that, but I think you're right. I think their meetings may be hybrid, though. I don't, yeah. everyone is not there. They're hybrid. Mm -hmm. They are they're hybrid. Different. Yeah. For sure. So um, you're not required to be there. I'm just letting, you know, that's in the realm of all the things that are possible. You can certainly be there live, but you don't have to be. And they are hybrid because some of the council members are not in the room right okay all right i'll i'll think about it <laughs> i'll see where I, I would actually i would actually you. you might also reach out to anna um because she, she's our i think she's our liaison right no no no, our, no, no. Our, alicia walker is our liaison anna is no oh. longer our liaison got it sorry that's okay she is copied on these meeting yeah. notices and everything she's on our list yeah okay so where are the notes i lost the agenda again where are we on the agenda guys i for some reason it disappeared um, we're we're done yeah. Done. items for next meeting oh we have we have items for next meeting we also have um there's no attendees so i guess we don't have to open the floor up for questions nope. um so items for the next meeting then are laura's discussion um what didn't we discuss there'll be those are the annual report um well, you have your updates as always. Updates as always. And I know that everybody's pressured for time, but it would sure be nice to have a couple of new members so we can plan a, some sort of a, um, you know, so we can plan <laughs> the next year, sort of figure out what direction or directions we're going to go in, um, waiting, of course, for the heat pump program to start. I mean, I think you're right. I think after that gets going, we'll probably have a lot more on our plate. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we have, there are things we, there's, there's always more we could be doing, right? So what should we be doing and what? how do we organize ourselves? And um, well, it'd be nice to have some time just to think about that. But any idea when new members will be? coming stephanie no i mean uh you've done the encouraging as i suggested it's like i said it's just yeah you know some of we lost our communications manager director we lost our finance yeah. director and those are two positions that probably worked most closely with the town manager other than the assistant town manager and you know 
other department right. heads, but those two were in pretty much constant contact with the town manager. So I think there's kind of a, yeah. a big hole that is, you know, we're scrambling to fill. And even, right. and even the situation with the superintendent, I mean, even though that's the schools, the town manager and the superintendent of schools yeah, used to right. meet a lot. So, right. and there's a lot of things that happen at the schools that impact the town, obviously. So it's just a really, it's, I, I mean, I feel right now, like my only comparison in all the years that I've been here to where we currently are is when John Musanti suddenly passed away and there was suddenly this kind of gap of leadership. And it's not that Paul isn't, is a gap of leadership. It's just that he doesn't have the some of the support that he's um right relied on so it's going to where things are going to it's going to take a while for things right now because yeah. we've also got staff that are trying to fill those voids who haven't done that work or like i said already have a full plate of work that they're doing and they're having to now add to what they're doing and learn some of these other things the other people were doing so it's just right. going to be it's just i think people need to adjust their expectations yeah. right now okay so. All right, so I won't ask about that again. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, all right, so just the usual. And if anyone has any other agenda items, send them to Stephanie, send them to me. Just let me know what comes up. And still no attendees in the audience. So I think we'll, oh, let's, yeah, go ahead. I, I just, I had a question if Dwayne had any updates from the Solar Bylaw Working Group that he'd like to share with us. Um. I guess uh, Stephanie um, sort of outlined procedurally where we're at um, and that we have a deadline October 6th um, for our deliverable. So we have a few more meetings left. Um, we have a meeting agenda for uh, this Friday uh, to uh, really hammer out in quick order uh, some of the key issues that we've discussed, but have to make decisions on. Um, that'll be primarily the focus for, um, and try to get through the gamut of those issues remaining um, on Friday. <clears throat> um, we are trying to reserve a final full meeting to then do a read through from sort of beginning to end uh, of what we put together. We meeting Chris, particularly on in terms of the drafting, but reflecting the 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 um, group, um, and um, and then there's a, another issue that we may we would probably seek to squeeze in um, between those two is is a little bit separate from zoning, which is sort of the permitting process and procedure for. Um, for for large scale, this is all about large scale solar um, in different, potentially in different zoning districts, I think they're called in, in the town. Um, so whether um, permitting would be through special permit or, or site plan review um, uh, uh, in, in different categories of zoning districts across the town. Um, and um, so that's sort of where, where we, where we stand on that, um, and, and sort of the, the broad outline of of um, what we're trying, what we're um, our plans for winding this thing down and wrapping it up, <laughs> um, with the with the understanding that uh, and the clear understanding that our deliverable is a draft, a recommendation. It's not the bylaw. <laughs> it's not the town's bylaw. It's the recommend recommendation from the committee, um, and um, uh, and there may be, you know, interest in the committee members or the working group members to uh, provide um, annotation on the on the bylaw with regard to other opinions and thoughts on on the matters that were discussed but not integrated into the bylaw, if we find that to be um, helpful. Um, to the uh, council and to the and to the town manager um, as they deliberate what we um, put put uh, put together. And, and I have to say again, I'm wondering how many folks here have been going to the solar forum that that Dwayne. This is different from the solar. I know, forum. I know, yeah, but, but, but yeah. how many have gone to the solar forum? Because 
Yeah, because I've been very impressed by how to the point. I mean, I love the first session. It got right into forests and <laughs> land use, even from coming from the state, right? That everybody is concerned about land use. And uh, last week, you know, I, I had no idea that the forest land in Massachusetts was declining over the last, as much as it has over the last decade or so. And, um, you know, I had assumed it was staying pretty steady or because I knew that in general, the trend in New England for a long time has been more forest. So it was actually a little, it was quite a, I, I learned a lot. And um, it's, it was an interesting, interesting bunch of speakers. One thing I didn't learn is what is causing that forest conversion across Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, I mean, according to, I think it was John Rogan, it was like only 10% of that was yeah. solar. So what's right. the other 90%? Uh, and I think that's development, but big box stores. There. I thought he said, yeah, I thought he said development. Yeah, it was being lost for development. He didn't say think, specifically, but yeah, I think he offered sort of a general answer: development, housing, and commercial development. But not. Uh, it'd be interesting to see a more specific study. Yeah. Um, what are those threats to forest? And further, how can we address those? Let's not put the onus entirely on solar as the that's the threat to forest, but what are these other things and how can they be addressed? Um, I did just want to double check, Dwayne, the uh, solar bio working group is this Friday at 11.30 to 1.30? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And I assume there'll be an agenda posted on the town website. It's already soon. posted on the website. Oh, I didn't see it a minute ago. Oh, I posted on the... You have to look where meetings are posted, not in their calendar, not in their web page. The official oh. postings are in the calendar. So if you go to the oh. town's website, there's a calendar at the bottom. Yeah. That's yeah, okay. the official posting for all meetings. I always do that first because that's the one oh, okay. that has to get posted. Because if that okay. doesn't get posted, we can't have the meeting. Uh, yeah, so, I'm looking at the Solar by Lab Working Group. Yeah, their page is actually... And sometimes I don't even get to it till like the day of. I'm always... Okay. It's always the website is the first place things go, get posted. go to the calendar okay thank go you to cal that. yeah always go to the calendar yep but the the um packet other packet information would be in the um bylaw um folder yeah that'll be in their meeting folder and again mm -hmm. i but again i'm not even uh, i try to get to those sooner but um especially with this group in particular solar bylaw working group there's a lot of information that comes and i don't get it at the same time so mm -hmm. trying to even just figure out what needs to go in there is a little bit cumbersome sometimes, but it will get yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. It will be nice to see kind of what the latest draft is of the bylaw that the committee will be discussing. I'd love the, to see that. Manageable. There'll be sections, but it won't be the complete draft yet. Oh, okay. uh, she was going to get that in, but um, didn't, and it may happen still, but as of right now, Chris didn't have it available to me today. So the, I did send the packet out to the committee members and I will get that. Uh, I'll do it now because actually you're ending early, so I'll have a little time. <laughs> so I'll put that online, um, their packet items as of right now. And if it gets added, it'll go in before the meeting. But I, I don't know that you'll have it yet. Okay. Thank you. Sure. And those are fun meetings for other members of ECAC. If you haven't attended and watched the Solar Bylaw Working Group meeting, they are also very informative. You can always go back and watch yeah. them. Yeah, yes. yeah. informative. I, I, you said fun. I'm not sure. <laughs> not for, for some, front, maybe. Not, <laughs> not for poor Dwayne. Yeah, he's uh, doing a great job there, Dwayne, I think, of um, <laughs> running those meetings. Yeah, thanks. Um, I give Stephanie a lot of credit for coaching me and, and maintaining some order as well. Um, it's um, We have a great group here. Uh, and we have a great group in the bylaw group, but it's um, a little bit different dynamics. <laughs> All right. So with that, we have a move to adjourn. I will move to adjourn at 5.45 p.m. Oh. Second. All right. All in favor. Yay. Yay. <laughs> All right. See you all in two weeks. Thanks, everybody. All righty. Thanks. Uh, See you at the block party. That's right. Yeah. Block party. See you at the Don't block forget. party. And the CRC meeting. I'll send out the, the um, what do you call it? Schedule. Time, the schedule. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Bye. Thanks, right. everybody.